In today's video, we'll discuss about adenomatoid odontogenic tumor. So, the definition of adenomatoid odontogenic tumor according to WHO is that it is composed of odontogenic epithelium in a variety of in a variety of histo architectural pattern. embedded in mature connective tissue stroma characterized by slow and progressive growth um, since it is a tumor of odontogenic origin there is one more thing that this is basically uh, characterized by duct structures, ductal structures plus varying degrees of degrees of inducing changes in connective tissue stroma. So, uh, coming on to the histogenesis, that is, uh, why does AOT occur? So, uh, specific stimulus that triggers the uh, progenitor cells of AOT is not known. Progenitor cells of AOT is unknown. However, it could arise from a number of structures as one as the one being enamel organ epithelial lining of dental lamina rest cells of molasses also it can arise from uh, remnants of dental lamina associated with governacular cord this will occur during the pre-secretory stage of enamel and uh, of enamel organ development. So it basically uh, in the clinical features it basically occurs after 20 years of age. It is more prominent in females. In sight, it is more uh, pre uh, prominent in maxilla than in uh, mandible. Also, it is uh, if it occurs in mandible as well as in maxilla, it will always mostly it will occur in the anterior portion that is in the anterior uh, to the cuspids now uh, there is a very special uh, name for this tumor which is two-third tumor it is called as two-third tumor because uh, it occurs uh, two-third of the tumor occurs mostly in females then it is all it occurs in maxilla mostly two-third of the tumor occurs in maxilla it involves the anterior region of jaw And it is associated, two-third of the tumor is associated with an unerupted tooth. Associated with an unerupted tooth. Unerupted tooth. Now coming on to the presentation. First of all, as in the definition, it is a slow-growing tumor. It is painless. It is asymptomatic. Now, through this, it will occur in association with an unerupted tooth. An unerupted tooth. Now, if it is happening in association with an unerupted tooth, that means it will delay the eruption of teeth. It can expand cortical bone but is not invasive. But is not invasive. Now, uh, also fluctuation is elicited. Now, in the radiographic features, what we see is it is a, a well demarcated radiolucency is seen. Radiolucency is seen. However, sometimes, uh, mostly, you see snowflake calcifications. So, it is basically radio opaque and radiolucent. That is, it is uh, showing a mixed uh, appearance in the radiograph. So, snowflake calcifications. 
now uh, in radiographic features i'll tell you one more thing uh, we'll discuss about the types so central and peripheral as the name suggests peripheral so it will occur in the soft tissue so the preoperative diagnosis a uh, presumptive diagnosis can be a gingival fibroma or a fibrous epulis now over here uh, in the peripheral uh, why do we uh, discuss it in the radiograph features uh, obviously there will not be anything prominent but sometimes what happens is uh, the gingival tumor basically uh, it causes the slight erosion of the alveolar uh, bones cortex so that's why in central again you have two types one is the follicular and one is the extra follicular follicular is more common in follicular what you will see is that you will see the tumor being in association with an unerupted tooth so if we think of this so our presumptive diagnosis goes on to the dentigerosis but in extra follicular you will not see it being associated with an unerupted tooth so our presumptive diagnosis can be global or maxillary cyst or late periodontal cyst why is it so because it occurs anterior to the cuspids now on the macroscopic features in the macroscopic features what we see is that uh, there is a, a soft roughly spherical mass it has a distinct capsule can have one or more cystic spaces with fluid or semi solid gritty material crown is embedded which crown crown of unerupted tooth now coming on to the most important part of a genomal odontogenic tumor that is histopathology uh, now in histopathology what we'll see is first i'll draw the diagram and then we'll form a few notes so coming on to the histopathological features of aot so what we see is a well defined capsule multinodular proliferation of spindle cuboidal columnar cells in rosette pattern appearance then we see eosinophilic material amyloid amyloid is characteristically stained by two stains which is uh, congo red and thioflavin t then we see some duct like structures resembling hyaline rings the nuclei are polarized away so also small foci of calcification this is the abortive enamel or dentinoid now uh, since this is completely benign it is not aggressive rarely recurs we'll have a conservative or a surgical approach now to sum up aot what we see is in the as stated by who that this compound uh, this is this is sorry this is composed of odontogenic epithelium uh, with ductal structures histo architectural pattern is varied and it has a mature connective tissue stroma it is characterized by slow and progressive growth variety of histo architecture mature it's also called as an adenomyeloblastoma uh, in histogenesis uh, 
we know that it is uh, the stimulus is unknown whereas it can be seen to grow from enamel organ dental lamina dental rest of malices also it can arise by the dental lamina associated with tubernacular cord then fifth, uh, 20 years uh, less than 20 years females and maxilla more in anterior region anterior to the cuspid it is called as a two-third tumor due to various reasons females in maxilla that is it involves also the anterior region of the jaw it is associated with an unerupted tooth in presentation it is low growing asymptomatic it delays the eruption and also is not invasive in well demarcated uh sorry in radiographic well demarcated radiolucence is no flake uh two types central peripheral follicular extra follicular unerupted tooth it is not uh, associated with erupted tooth then in macroscopic features uh we'll see the crown we'll see the capsule in microscopic features, uh, something very important is well-defined capsule and a rosette pattern is seen. There is a myeloid, two stains for a myeloid. Then there are hyaline rings. Then there are small foci of calcification, which might be a bottom enamel or dentinoid. It is completely benign. It is not aggressive. It really recurs.